Hello and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband Joe. Hello. Hello, you are right there? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to avoid your garlic breath. Oh, I had a really garlicky lunch. I'm it's sorry. It's very bad. I can't help it. I think you need to breathe in the other direction. I don't want to breathe in the other direction. <laughs> well, you need to. How about you inhale in the other direction? <laughs> it's my office. <laughs> Um, today we drink. Well, I'm drinking water. What are you drinking? I have daffodil no drink. juice. I am. I'm misery, <gasps> Joe. Show the listeners the daffodils. If you're watching this podcast, look at these magnificent daffodils in my office, creating a little bit of sunshine, and also ah. attracting all of the ladybirds. Where do they come from? I don't know. I think they're living in gaps in my walls, and now it's warm, and they're like woohoo. And they're all coming out and dying on my floor. So Ladybird Central in here. I know, it's great. Um, so yeah, today, we're <laughs> that's not the title of the podcast at all. <laughs> um, no, I have to. You have to make it right. Yeah. So today, <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I could not deal with having the wrong title underneath. Today we're talking about lessons from a book launch. All of the lessons that I have learned over the last week or so of launching my book. Okay. There are many. Is the book launch over? No. Okay. How long is the no. book? No. I'm, I'm kind of the launch period is for February-ish. Okay. Until I've run out of swag to send people already. Mm-hmm. So if you want some cool swag, better buy my book now. moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash Feb 2020 book launch. Link in the show notes. Link in the people. show notes. Link in the show notes. Um, so yeah, but before we do that, what are we reading? Joe? what are you reading? <laughs> Uh, Listeners, if you can guess what Joe's reading, <laughs> there's a prize in it for you. I'm reading The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. Still. Still. Ongoing. It's a, it's a project. It's a big one. Mm. We are all... We're not reading this, but Joe and I have kicked off a project um, to watch every single episode of Star Trek ever made, starting right from the pilot episode of the original series, which was terrible. It was bad. And even though during the 1960s, Star Trek was very ahead of its time, we're discovering that a lot of episodes are very problematic. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I think it's fine that women and men and everybody should wear whatever it is they want to wear. <laughs> I just find it a little unlikely that all of the women would have chosen to wear skirts quite that short. They've all got their butts hanging out. It's like actual butts hanging out the back. Which is, again, you know, I'm a pole dancer, not a problem, but it just doesn't seem to be very practical. Mm. Especially, I was going to say, especially when the men are all covered, but actually that's not entirely true because at every opportunity that you can possibly imagine, James Kirk takes his shirt off. Yes. Or gets his shirt ripped off him. Mm-hmm. Or is otherwise slightly creepy towards whatever young woman happens to be in the vicinity. <laughs> um, it is also awesome. It, well, yes. But also terrible. Mm. In many ways. So that's what we're doing. But I am reading at the moment, fiction-wise, I am... Well, I've literally just finished reading The Outsider by Stephen King, which is his latest book. Okay, it's good. Uh, It was great, actually. Yeah, it was really good. Very creepy, um, as you would expect from Stephen King. And I got... I I, I had a really weird day on... Was it Wednesday night you were away? It was, wasn't it? Yes. It's Wednesday night you were away. And so on Wednesday morning... I had to finish I had to finish the book because otherwise I would have been reading it in bed and that would have been terrifying. I would have been terrified. So I was like, right, I've got to finish this book in daylight before Joe goes. And it meant that I started work really late. So I didn't get into my office until later than usual and um, because I didn't have any snooker to watch. Wait, what? So whenever I used to read a scary book, if I was reading scary books and I was on my own in the house and I didn't want to go to bed having just read a scary book because something's definitely going to grab your ankle from underneath the bed if you've just read a scary book and you're on your own. Right. Um, I, used to, I used to put the snooker on afterwards because you can't possibly be scared of anything when the snooker's on. Right. It's true. Try it. Um, okay. Not that you get scared of things anyway. But... Not, not so much. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, so The Outsider by Stephen King's really good. It's just been made into a Netflix series as well. So I think we ought to watch it. And is Stephen King still churning things out that, you know, are different from all the other things that he's already churned out? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, you can't diss Stephen King, dude. I can. Yeah. And you're not a massive Stephen King fan, are you? Not really. You should read some of his short stories, because some of them are brilliant. Like, one of the short stories that he wrote that I... Oh, it's stuck in my head because I just loved the concept, and I found the whole thing really unsettling. And it's not it's not a horror story, this one, isn't it? It's just 
one of his short stories. It's called The Langoliers, and it's about time travel, and it was just a really interesting take on time travel. Hmm. I mean, I've, I've read his stuff. I've read, I've read lots of the old school stuff, the, you know, It and Christine and... Um, I've never read Christine. Carrie and all that kind I've of stuff. I've never read Carrie either. Yeah. I knew. Um, and, you know, quite enjoyed him, but felt like I'd read enough Stephen King. Fair enough. And he's, well, read, he's read like 600 books. He's written 600 books since then. I know, he's amazing. So anyway, I've just finished that and I'm about to start reading The Salt Path, which is this month's book club book in town. Okay. So um, I've just started reading that. It's already had me in tears before even the end of chapter one. <laughs> Sounds great. It is good. It is good. But it's, uh, yeah. Um, and I'm just about to start reading Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott, which is a book on some, some instructions on writing and life. And I've dipped in and out of it before and I love it. And she's just marvellous. And I'm reading it properly now for my book club, Bookaholics Anonymous, which if you would like to join, link's in the show notes. It's totally free. Nice. Um, we meet once a month via Zoom and talk about the book that we've just read, which this month is going to be Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. <laughs> Can't really say much about it yet because I haven't really started reading it yet. Okay. Properly. Tune in same time next week. To yeah. hear, that, hear how that went. Yes. Okay, so I have just launched my new book. Launched your new book. Which is called How the Hell Do You Write a Book? That one. That one there. And it's, um, I'm pretty proud of that book. It's great. It's got a forward by Drayton Bird. Thanks, Drayton. Hi, Drayton. And yeah, so I'm just going to quickly run through what I did and what I've learned. Okay. So I've never, I've never launched a book before, which people might be a bit surprised by, given what I do. Um, but I've never officially launched a book because once I have helped my clients write their books, it's, it's handed, I hand it over to them. Then they go and do their thing. They launch it. They do, they do what they do. Can I take a step back and ask for a definition, please? Of what? A launch. What's a book launch? Okay, so what's uh, the purpose of a book launch? The purpose of a book launch is to release your book into the world with a bit of fanfare and um, pomp and circumstance and, you know, try and sell as many books as you possibly can and do other things off the back of it all as one big event instead of just kind of writing it, self-publishing it and letting it trickle out into the world. Mm -hmm. You want to make a big, a big deal out of it. That's basically what it is. Okay. Um, it's no, really not that much different from a product launch if you're launching a new product or something it's like I've got this new thing and you build some buzz up to it and then it's like right I'm releasing it on this day so I had this book launch is the first time I've ever done it properly when I wrote Business for Superheroes I did a launch just to my email list just to the people on my email list mm -hmm. and it went pretty well and I sold quite a lot of books actually to that list which was very engaged and was had all the right people on it my list now is much smaller and has very much fewer of the right people on it which um, part of the reason for the book launch was to build up my email list again. Okay. So I couldn't rely just on my email list this time. Um, and I, you know, I didn't want to. I wanted to, get, I wanted to get the word out there a bit more. So I obviously promoted it to my email list. That's fine. Um, but I'd already pre-launched it to the list back in December, was it, when it okay. first came out? And so I have spent the last month or so planning what I wanted to do as a, a bigger, you know, as a bigger launch deal. So I took an idea that I heard from Andy Bounds, who hi, is, Andy. <laughs> hi Andy, who is a communications and sales expert. And I once heard him talk at an event he did jointly with Drayton Bird. And that was the first time I met Drayton, which is where I made him scream. Because <laughs> I presented him, anyway, that's a different story. Um, but Andy, I was really impressed with, um, with his presentation and I still learn, I still use some of the stuff that I learned in that presentation. And when I was helping Drayton write his autobiography, Andy emailed Drayton with a little bit of advice about book launches mm -hmm. and I took that advice and and ran with it for myself okay. um, and I, Drayton had done the same thing for his book launch and, and so what Andy had suggested was ask maybe 10 or 12 people experts in various industries you know maybe in your industry maybe in related industries if they will help you promote your book and what you ask them to do is promote your book out to their lists um, their email lists and, and on social media and stuff like that. Um, and also provide you with a couple of pieces of advice or information that readers of your book will find really, really useful. Okay. So Andy provided me with three videos, which were great, really useful videos on sales techniques and communications techniques. Um, other people gave me other bits of advice and um, Julia made a report for things to consider when you're designing your book cover, that kind of thing. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, and it's, it's a really great idea. Um, and so I went to a bunch of people and... All of them said yes, nice. which was really great. Um, I was really grateful to everybody. And um, like some of the people who said they would help was Andy Bounds, 
Drayton helped me out, which is fantastic. Said some really nice things about me. Um, a guy called Doberman Dan, who if you're in the internet marketing world, you will have um, heard of probably as an American guy. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Dan. You will not be listening to this. Um, Ryan Wallman, who is awesome. He is the funniest marketer on Twitter. Um, and he's written a book called Delusions of Brander, which I absolutely love. That's going to be in the book club at some point. Um, he gave me some cool stuff to share. And um, I think he's... I don't know if he's shared anything on social media or anything yet. I'm going to nudge him and hmm. see if he has. Um, but either way, he's really cool and I was, I was really glad to have his help. Rory Sutherland, who is a vice chairman of Ogilvy and Mather. Nice. Which is quite a coup for me. And again, he's provided something really cool, which is marvellous. Um, thank you for that, everybody. Yinka helped me. Hi, Yinka. Hi, Yinka. We love Yinka. Yinka has helped me and that was fantastic. Um, Kevin and Vicky, loads of people. Um, I'm going to list everybody out in various blog posts and things to thank them properly. So anyway, I'd asked all these people. They all said yes, which is great. Um, so, and I asked them to all promote it on the same day, mm-hmm. the launch day, because, you know, the more people who buy your book from Amazon on a specific day, the higher it's going to rise through the ranks and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also did some promotions on Instagram and Facebook, or rather Harriet did. Thank you so much, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Um, and other people have shared stuff as well. I did not do nearly as much as I could have done. Um, and I have learned many lessons from this. So that's that's what I did. Okay. Um, like I said, it was my first ever book launch and I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't really know what to do other than kind of some of the stuff that I put together and decided what I was going to do. I didn't know at all how many sales to expect. Um, it would have been like, for, for instance, Andy Bounds is much better known than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ended up being the number one best-selling product on the whole of Amazon on the day of his book launch, Ouch. which was really cool. Mm. Um, I would have loved to have done that, maybe for my next book. Because um, I'm, I'm learning about, like, I can write a book um, and help people write books and I can help people market them as well. Book launches are entirely new animal for me. So it's been really cool learning about it and I've taken lots of cool lessons away. It was very stressful. Um, I was very tired. <laughs> Um, I had a lot of late nights and, and kind of getting stuff finished and all the rest of it. So I just wanted to run through a few things that I had learned okay. from this process. Um, numbers one to five are all start your book launch process and planning earlier. Right. Like left start it too, it left it too late, huh? Yeah, I don't think it's that. Yes, I did leave it too late. Um, not because, but do you know what? I was thinking about why. I left it too late and it's not because I'm lazy I don't you know I joke about being lazy but I don't think anyone really could call me lazy in all Mm. seriousness um I think it was fear because I've created this book that I'm really proud of that is a really good book Mm. in my good days I think it's a really good book on my bad days I think it's a bag of shit (laughs) um but no I am really proud of it um it's like anything you ask any writer and you know sometimes you know some some stuff it's like I am really proud of it I think it's a really good book um cool and it was just scary putting it out into the world because it's like if you actually do a book launch and ask people to buy it and and ask people to help you sell it then suddenly you know if nobody buys it it's gonna really hurt whereas if you don't say anything if i hadn't done anything i could have been like oh well i didn't i didn't put much effort in didn't, so didn't put nobody, much effort in. nobody bought it yeah it's to be expected that's fine yeah and so it's just like another sticking your head above the parapet and you know inviting people to throw rocks at it and do you know what I mean Mm. and so I think that's why I didn't start it earlier because I kept being like oh oh I'll I'll get to it I'll get to it and then but it's fear really yeah it's totally fear really if I'm if I'm being totally honest so I didn't start early enough um I didn't know enough about book launches Mm -hmm. um now I know more about book launches and for my next book launch I'm going to know even more and And you're going to start earlier and I'm going to start earlier Mm Um, what else did I learn? To be braver about asking people for help. As because... soon as you asked everybody, they all said yes. Yeah, I had to, I emailed a couple of people a couple of times, but yeah, they came back and said yes. Nobody said no. And I made it very easy for them to say no as well. Cause I, you know, at the end I was like, absolutely fine. I'm, I, you know, if you, if this isn't your cup of tea, that's not a problem at all. Thank you for listening and reading. I was, oh, I also made, um, little videos asking people to help me, which most people won't bother doing. So cool. put a face to the name. Yeah. Face to the name, name to the face. You know what I mean. Voice to the words. I don't know. Them. Yeah, that. Um, So yeah, I would be braver about asking people to help me Mm -hmm. because all of the people that I asked said yes, which was awesome. Um, So there were a few people that I didn't, I chickened out of asking. I was like, oh, I'd really like to ask that person or, you know, that person would be a really good fit or, you know, and for some reason I didn't. And I didn't ask enough women to help me. 
And I'm really annoyed about that. Interesting. Yeah, I know, isn't it? And I was thinking, I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, why have I? Because I could think of a whole bunch of female entrepreneurs that I would have loved to have asked to help me do this. And I chickened out of asking all of them. That's strange. I know, which is really weird. And I'm annoyed for two reasons. First of all, because, you know, I'm chicken. And second of all, because I want more, I want to, I want to introduce more people to the people who help me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I want to help more women grow their businesses if I can, because, you know, we're not loud enough and we're not. Why don't you just ask them? Well, the launch is kind of over now. It's not, it's going on all month. Don't, ask, don't say that kind of thing to me on like live podcasting. Will you do it? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. We'll check in next week. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm going to have to unpack that at some point and figure out why. Mm. And I think it's, I don't know, if, and I have to be kind of careful what I say because all of the people that I've asked, I really admire, obviously, because otherwise I wouldn't have asked them. And I wonder if it's because, I wonder if it's because I put more weight on women's approval than on men's approval. Hmm, perhaps. And I don't know why that might be. Um, I'm more bothered about being judged by other female entrepreneurs, I think, than by male entrepreneurs. And okay. I, I wonder why that is. Um, I'm going to have to dig into my brain with a spoon at some point and find out. Because that's ridiculous. Yes, yes it is. Because we, we need to help each other, women in business. We need to help each other more. And, you know, me doing that is just dumb. <laughs> Get on with it. So yeah, that's that, that's what I would. But I would be brave about asking all sorts of people for help, hmm. um, because if you ask people and if you ask them graciously and give them an easy out, then it's it's, it's fine. It's fine. Yes. You're not um, burning relationships or no pissing people off or you know no. cornering people. I would never. I'm never pissed off if people ask me for things. I'm never <clears> pissed <throat> off. I don't always say yes, but I'm never pissed off about it. So, um, Joe, you told me a good thing. Well, Tell me what you learned well, when, when I heard. That you know, we were doing a podcast on on things we learned about book launches. I thought, well, I better I better find out about book launches. Um, Did you research a little bit? It's because you're my love. So I obviously you know started googling, and one person's strategy at least was all about getting your Google ranking high. Okay. So um, Amazon ranking. Amazon even. ranking. Amazon yeah. ranking. It's all about getting you know, in the top 20 of Amazon on the topic that you're talking about. Okay. Um, And their whole methodology was focused around that and nothing else. It wasn't about making money or or meeting people or anything. And they said, to do that, you need lots of sales for a month. Right. Not for a day or a week or anything else. You need a month's worth of good sales. Okay. And you need at least 10 reviews. Okay. So their whole strategy was around getting those two things. And what they did was they would say, um, you know, talk to people, email chains, mailing lists, all that good stuff that you're doing. But they they said, have the starting price as low as you can bear. Uh, they were saying like 99 cents. That'll for be month. for an e-book. Yeah, for an e-book. Yeah. Um, and uh, that will get you lots of sales. And then you get people to write reviews a couple of days after they received it. And that gets you the reviews. Mm-hmm. And uh, that gets you high enough in the rankings to keep you near the top of the list for the next month. And assuming you sell a bunch of books then as well, it keeps you high in the next month. So the whole deal is about staying high up the Amazon list. Can you remember whose advice that was? No, nope, but I'm sure my internet history knows. Cool. It would be really nice to credit that person with um, hmm. with what you've just learned. So um, that link will be in the show notes when Joe has dug it out and, do so. <laughs> and found it. And I kind of, it would be nice to, in fact, we could. So that was um, Joseph Hogue. And we're back in the room. Hello. <laughs> um, so Joe found that on a oh God, terrible that's... sounding website. Yeah, but the guy who wrote the advice was a guy called Joseph Hogue. H O G U E. Yeah. So there you go. Book launch strategy will promote will protect your Amazon rankings and turn your book into a bestseller. Um, so yeah, that's that. I mean, it's, I don't know if that will work or not, but because I haven't tried it, but go try it if you're going to launch a book. Try it. Mm. Um, which brings me to the next thing that I've learned that I didn't I didn't do in time um, because I and actually you're you're going to be helping me with this and I didn't ask you to learn about it in time, um, but I didn't use any ads I didn't do any paid advertising at all. Sure. Um, and I think that would have been a big help on Facebook and on Amazon 
Amazon ads. So um, Joe's doing currently um, a Facebook advertising course that I've bought yes. um, because I knew that I wasn't going to do it basically. Um, <clears throat> I, w- I want to know when, when, when you set up the stuff, I'm going to sit and watch you and kind of help you. And I'll, I'll obviously have to write the copy as well. Sure. Um, so I want to understand it, but I know I'm not going to do it. And that's the kind of minute detail stuff that I think you'll quite enjoy. Okay. Um, so ads. Use ads um, to push people to your book launch um, and all the rest of it. I'm going to definitely do that next time when I've got a handle on how they work. Um, another related thing, ask for reviews more often. Yes. It's really, really, really difficult to get people to review your book. It's really difficult, even among people who really love you. Um, it's I, I, you know you have to ask, and I'm, I'm not I'm not poking at anybody here at all who who I've asked for a review who hasn't reviewed it yet but please do go review it. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's just, a, just a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult thing to, to get people to do. So ask for, ask for reviews often and early. And as soon as you know somebody's got a book, follow up. So as part of my email sequence, there's always quite early on, please go and review my book. I missed a bloody trick in the actual book. I made a video about this the other day. I forgot to put in the printed book, and I'll change this in the second edition, um, a page right at the end that says, thanks so much for reading my book. Please go here to Amazon and review it now. Um, I'm putting that in the digital version of the book because it's obviously very easy for me to change that Mm -hmm. um, and then re-upload it. So the digital version of the book will have that in and it will have a hyperlink as well, which which makes it it even easier. Mm -hmm. Um, And I use a piece of software called Vellum, which makes it really easy to link to the bookstore where the person bought the book. So if they bought it somewhere else, if they bought it on, say, Smashwords or Barnes and Noble or something like that, it'll hyperlink to the shop where they bought the book. Nice. And leave the review there, which is really, which is really cool. That's it's really cool. simple. Yeah, I would rather they reviewed it on Amazon to be honest, because more people use Amazon, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, get more reviews if you, if you can. Um, I should have talked more about the launch. I was too quiet on social media and in person. And I think it's because I was so sick of hearing myself talk about my book. <laughs> I thought everybody else would be as well, which they might well have been, but it's, it's that old chestnut of, um, people stop, people stop running successful adverts in their businesses because they're sick of them and they forget that they see it every day, but the people they're advertising to don't. Hmm. And it's the same with me. So I'm sick of hearing and thinking about and talking about my book. But and probably you are as well. <laughs> um, but you know the people who are out there that have never heard of me, they're they're not sick of hearing about it because they've never heard about it before. So I'd forgotten one of my own rules mm-hmm. of advertising, um, and I just I just didn't want to piss people off on social media, which is ridiculous because I'm like, well, I'm not putting a gun to anybody's head and forcing them to look at my posts. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, so I really I really that again that's fear. It's a fear thing. I've cared far too much what the people thought of me. Um, So yeah, I should have talked about it a bit more. Um, It helps having Harriet do that kind of thing for me on Facebook and Instagram because then I'm not doing it. She is. Mm -hmm. And Instagram's been great, actually. Um, My Instagram presence has been really good. Harriet's done a really good job of that. Um, I should have done more stuff on my personal Facebook page and on my other, you know, Facebook groups and things. Um, More live events and talks. I've done a few talks in the last few weeks. It would have been great to have done more. I could mm-hmm. have organized more. I could have organized my own live events. I could have organized a big in-person book launch and got local media there and stuff like that. And I didn't. And again, I, part of it, to be honest, part of it was time. I have been incredibly busy over the last two or three months. Um, mm-hmm. I have. I mean, you've seen how busy I've been. Yeah, yeah. Um, and part of it, again, was fear. And I think another part of it was I'm just, I've spent so much time and energy and focus on this book. I just got sick of it. (laughs) I got sick of the whole thing. So that's another lesson actually is you are going to be sick of your book by the time you get to the end of the book launch, but you can't let that stop you from doing this stuff. Um, For sure. Yeah. And that's, that's probably a really, really important lesson. Um, I could have organized a big online party, a big online book launch. And I did talk about that with Harriet and then I did nothing about it. So like a big, Facebook live Mm -hmm. you know I'm part of the problem with this is I'm not a big user of social media I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook anymore I took it off my phone I don't really know how Facebook lives work I see other people doing them and they seem to have success but I'm always really wary of just jumping on a bandwagon that I don't know very much about and trying to do it Mm -hmm. um so that is a legit reason why I, I, I didn't do very much on social media but again the more I do on social media the more comfortable I'll become with it so there's that I'm also I just don't want to spend all of my time on social so there is that as well and that as well I think is a good lesson to take away I feel quite often pressured into doing stuff that everybody else is doing just because they're doing it 
And if I don't enjoy doing it, if that's not where I want to spend my time, I'm not going to do a very good job anyway. And I shouldn't be worrying about, you know, there are other things that I can do. Hmm. And I think that's really important. Don't feel like you have to do stuff just because other people are doing it. Social media, particularly, if you're not going to spend time and effort on doing it well. And doing it badly is almost worse than not doing it. Yeah, it's like, don't bother. So, um, so yeah, and I think really the, the biggest takeaway, I think, is for this podcast is put a proper plan in place. Get as many people to help as you can. Um, and don't be afraid to be excited about your book, even when you're sick of hearing yourself talk about it. Don't be afraid to keep ramping it up. Um, and I had another takeaway then that was quite, that was quite a good one. No, I can't remember what it was. Come on, brain, work. You could buy the book. Takeaway, buy the book. Takeaway, buy the book, yeah. Yeah. Um, learn, learn from your, you know, like I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually quite pleased with how it's going. Mm-hmm. I've had a decent number of sales on Amazon and through my website. I've, I'm building up um, my email list with the right people on it. There are people joining it every day. That's um, cool. It's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not unhappy with the way it's gone at all. And the way I've seen it is this is the first time I've done this and I'm treating it as a real learning experience. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway that I can give you. Do all of this stuff, try it out. Don't be disheartened if it doesn't work the way you would like it to, or if it doesn't work the way you think it should. Learn and move forward. Learn and move forward. Yeah. And that's, I did go into it with that. So I've actually, I've, I think the old me a couple of years ago me would have been quite upset about you know various things that have happened or not happened and because I've gone into it with the mindset that you know what I'm just gonna learn this is gonna be one big experiment and I'm gonna learn from it mm-hmm. and I'm gonna see what I can do better next time and that's made me feel pretty good about the whole thing cool yeah how do you think it's gone you don't have a clue do you? well I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen the graphs for the sales so I don't know no and that was the other thing that was quite frustrating yeah here's another lesson don't sit there and obsessively F5 the Amazon KDP bookshelf refresh, report refresh refresh refresh, refresh. <laughs> because there's a massive lag sometimes days between a sale going through and Amazon recording it on your reporting page and that's, that's like that's like why is nobody buying my book and then two days later it's like oh they are that's fine <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's worth knowing isn't it that is worth knowing, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty scary for a couple of days yeah sometimes it shows up within hours and sometimes it shows up instantly and sometimes it shows up days later and i really no idea why that is the case so so there you go um right then okay what's coming up next week uh, mudita 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 we're going to be talking about mudita and why it's something that you need to cultivate if you want to write a book or do something big or achieve something cool. Whole new word. Whole new word. Um, in other news, I'm sorting, I'm still sorting out a writing retreat. Not sorted out yet. In progress. Oh, I'm launching um, this Friday. I am launching a free 29 day writing challenge. And by the time this podcast goes out, you will be able to join it at, hang on moxiebooks.co.uk 29 hyphen day hyphen writing hyphen challenge why is that such a shit url <laughs> link is in the show notes <laughs> um yeah it's it does exactly what it says on the tin i'm going to get you to write something every day for 29 days cool and you'll get an email from me every day with a writing prompt and an idea and a little bit of cheering and encouragement and the idea is I want you to create a writing habit so that when you come to write your book, you find the whole thing a little bit less painful. Nice. Yeah. Uh, if you've listened to every episode of this podcast, you know what to do. Email me with your postal address and I will send you a cool gift. Nice. Mm-hmm. And what else? Oh. Oh. Subscribe. Like it. Review. Five reviewers. stars. Reviewers. Yeah. Five star reviews, please. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm really tired. I know. I'm really hungry. Um, let's go. Let's go. We're let's done. Go. Bye, guys. We'll be back same time next week. Bye.